Okay, I think I have done it. Hopefully people can join in a second. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, if you can't tell. Um, this is definitely the first time that I've ever done a live stream, and that was a little more stressful than I thought to get set up. Okay. Awesome. Okay. It looks like someone has joined. Hi, Bob. How are you? Good to have you here. Um, so for everyone here right now, I am hoping that this morning can be a Q&A slash I have a couple of exciting updates in a little bit to get to. Um, so if you guys have any questions, want to know where I'm at, any of that kind of stuff, go ahead and drop it in the comments. Um, and I'm going to try to keep up as people keep messaging. So if I miss your comment, um, I'm going to be scrolling back through. But please uh, give me some grace. This is my first time doing this. So trying to figure it out. <laughs> Hi from Ohio. Hi from Sweden. So happy to have you guys here from Canada. And I hope the quality of the camera is okay. I just spent the last like two hours trying to get my actual camera set up. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think I have the right software to do that. I did not realize that before. So hopefully that uh, doesn't really affect the quality too much. Hi from Seattle. Hi from New York. Um, Brett, I'm currently in Colorado and I have a really lovely view of some snowy peaks out my door right now. Super, super happy to be here. And for anybody just joining now, the first part of this live stream I'm hoping can be um, like a Q&A section, I guess. So if you guys have any questions for me about whatever, um, as long as it's appropriate, go ahead and drop it in the comments or the uh, discussion chat box, and I will go ahead and just answer them as they come in. Breckenridge, you are pretty close actually to me right now. Florida, Africa, the camera looks great. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, guys. Um, yeah, like I said, first time doing this, so hopefully the kinks are worked out pretty quickly and it's not too big of an issue. But um, if it goes well, maybe we'll do more of these in the future. From Montana, you were just in Aspen on Thursday. That's awesome. Got Florida, Virginia, Miami. Ah, this is so cool. This community is so worldly, if that makes sense. They're so international and it's just so fun to have people from all corners of the world. Ohio. <laughs> well, maybe. How's the pup? I was going to say, I can get into a couple of updates here, um, but we got questions coming in. Perfect. Uh, Tara is doing wonderfully. She is sitting outside right now like a little lizard, uh, just basking in the high elevation sun. She absolutely loves it up here. I think partially because the sun is so intense and warm and that's her favorite activity, but also just because um, for the past couple of days, actually dealing with some of her health stuff, we took some time in an Airbnb to try to decompress and get her feeling better. And I think it really did help actually, which is such a relief to me because it was quite stressful for a bit there. So she seems to be doing much better. And I think now too, she's also really excited to be back outside. Um, this dog is not uh, as built or she didn't grow up in a house. So it's a little bit weird for her, I think, to have like a bed and a full place to walk around. Awesome. How is my gas mileage? So while I don't have um, like a typical car these days has a meter that will change over your trip that shows you your gas mileage. My truck is an 06, so it does not have that technology. But when I have calculated it and I do it probably every two or three months, 
I usually get between 13 and like 14.5, 14.7 miles per gallon. And that really just depends on how much mountain terrain I'm covering and the elevation that I'm driving. But here in Colorado, I think I've been getting roughly like 360 to 380 uh, miles per tank, which is right in that range. It's about 14 miles per gallon. Awesome. Near Pahrump, Nevada. You know, I actually know where Pahrump is or Pahrump, Nevada is. I've driven through a couple of times, just unfortunately on my way to other places, but I'm sure as a local, it's a great place. Hi from Denver. Hi from Denver. Um, I'm actually going to be heading to Denver probably in a couple of weeks here. So I'm excited to check out your town. It is wonderful weather up here. Honestly, I have on this long sleeve and it might be overkill. Uh, we are pretty high up. So even though it's cool out, a 60 degree day, I think feels more like 70. Uh, the weather has been absolutely gorgeous up here and we finally got out of the snow, which is quite nice. <laughs> Ontario, hi. Do you travel more or less depending on your gas mileage? Um, I would say not because of the gas mileage specifically, but something that does definitely influence where I travel and how fast I travel or, you know, how often I'm on the road is gas prices. Now, last week, for example, I was in Colorado Springs for a quick stop and gas there was like $2.87, which is insane. I don't think I've seen $2 gas prices I don't even think I saw that when I was like growing up driving when I was 16 years old. So that definitely makes it easier to travel as compared to being in, say, San Diego, where I paid over $6 a gallon like a month and a half ago. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. But I definitely try to stay places where I'm not paying crazy gas prices frequently. And if I am, I will travel slower through those areas. I always wonder why you spend so much time in cold climates when you could just hang at the beach further south. So good question. Um, I definitely did try the snowbird lifestyle this year. I went down to Baja, as a lot of you saw, and I also spent some time in the desert. And now I guess you could say I'm in the high desert, but definitely colder, higher elevation. And I think that for me, at least, I prefer a couple of things. One, dry climates are super important to me, which you can get in a desert, um, but not necessarily in Baja, for example, where it was pretty humid. I also, I don't know, I spent time at the beach. It was great. I think there's definitely a time and a place for that. But for me, at least, I kept feeling like something was missing. I kept wanting to go back to the mountains. And I think that just comes down to, at heart, I prefer the mountains over the beach, which is silly, maybe, since I grew up at the beach, but also probably a part of it is, you know, I grew up having access to the ocean and I do love it. I love it so much. Um, but at the end of the day, I always find myself wanting to come back to the mountains. And so if that means that we deal with a little bit of snow in the meantime, um, it's really not that big of a deal. And I do also find that for both Tara and myself, it's much, much easier to deal with cold weather than it is warm weather. Being a long haired dog, she really overheats pretty easily. And so even on the days when it was in like the low 80s in Baja, um, the humidity plus that temperature and not having an AC in the camper made it really difficult for us to stay down there comfortably. And we constantly had to be like in the water, which is fun for vacation. But when you have to work and I'm oftentimes inside or sitting on my computer, it can be really difficult to cool off regularly. So I much rather be here and put on extra clothes, use my sleeping bags uh, in bed and turn on my heater if need be. All right. Blessings from Brooklyn. Hi from Brooklyn. Good enough. Yeah, honestly, eight to 10 miles a gallon. That's what I was getting in the school bus. And that was brutal. I felt like I could never travel very far. And I don't even want to know the amount of money that I spent to go, I think, roughly 26,000 miles that year. What part of Colorado are we in? We are in kind of the central part of Colorado. So there's mountain ranges that flank this large valley. And we are in that central part of Colorado. I don't want to give too much specifics because we'll be here for a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, a really, really beautiful part with mountains all around us. Bavaria is so cool. Greetings, uh, Gunther, I think your name is. That's so cool that you're from Bavaria. 
Sacramento Park or Pass. I almost stopped at Great Basin actually on my way out here. Unfortunately, a snowstorm had just ripped through the area. And so most of the park was still closed. And I think all of the dispersed camping was too, but definitely on my list to go back. That's super cool that you're near there. Hello from Texas. My parents are actually in Texas right now traveling. What is the weight? And I think you're referring to the weight of the camper. And I see there's somebody else, Terry, also. Oh, Terry. Okay. Both of those are you. What is the weight of the camper? The camper full, I have not reweighed in a while. So it's definitely changed. But dry weight is right around 1,100 pounds. And I know a lot of people are probably thinking, oh my gosh, on a tundra, that is overweight. And in theory, it could be. Um, but I really don't travel with much between Tara, myself, the water that I carry, which is about 16 gallons, so under 100 pounds, propane, which is about 20 pounds, and then just things like food, towels, clothes. Um, I think we're still right around like a 16 to 1700 pound weight. And with airbags, heavy duty leaf springs that are up to 1800 pounds, and also completely redone suspension, I went through and replaced sway bar links. I did coilovers on the front. I replaced my rear shocks when I bought the truck. Um, we're actually even sitting kind of nose down still. And I think the airbags have really made a great difference, especially like highway to dirt road driving because they're adjustable. And so when I'm out on a dirt road like today, I can bring that PSI all the way down to five PSI, which is really like spongy comparatively um, to when we get on the highway when I want to have heavier suspension or a stiffer suspension and get a little bit better gas mileage, I can put that all the way up to 100 PSI. So between all of those things, it's been working out really well. Aaron, how do you plan on dealing with hot summer days? So I was just mentioning also, hello, Aaron. Uh, he's one of our patrons. Nice to see you here. I was mentioning that it's really difficult for us to be in hot weather, like in Baja. Um, we don't necessarily travel for warm weather in the winter, but in the summer, we definitely do. And so last year, for example, I was up in Bend, Oregon. I was in Stanley, Idaho. I was up in Washington, places where at night it's still getting into like the 40s and 50s a lot of time. And the daytime, there are very rare occasions where we get above like 80 or 90 degrees. And when we do, we try to be in those dry climates again. So we're not dealing with the humidity. That said, it does still get warm. And so when I know there's a heat wave coming, what we've done in the past, because I don't have AC, um, thankfully the camper does a great job with these massive windows on the side up front and then the hatch that you guys can see here. In addition to the fan that I have, the Max Air fan and the cab window, opening all of those up, I can create a really lovely cross breeze. And the fiberglass camper actually does a great job of keeping us cool on warm days. Um, you take off more clothes, you wear tank tops and shorts, and you usually find a lake or a river. So that's our plan this year. Lots of high alpine lakes, hopefully lots of hiking and backpacking in higher elevations as well, and just trying to keep things cool before they get hot. Because um, I've noticed that it's easier to keep things at a nice cool temperature than it is to bring things back from a really high temperature. Hi from the Scottish Highlands. My dog and I will be touring around the Highlands in a camper van. Thanks for inspiring. That is so cool, Sky. I'm really excited for you. And Scotland is a dream of mine. I got to go to Ireland a couple of years back and it was beautiful. I know very different than Scotland, but it definitely inspired me to want to travel more in that region of the world um, to have fun. That is so cool. Hi from Scotland as well. You guys should connect maybe. <laughs> Jamie Parker, hello from England. Oh, hi from La Ventana. I freaking loved La Ventana, Heidi, when I was just down there. Um, the one thing that was a little bit difficult were the amount of puffer fish washed upon the beach where we were, uh, but we actually hit it on a really calm, beautiful, beautiful week. Not ideal for kite surfing, which people love to do there, but for us, just wanting to run on the beach and go snorkeling and swimming, it was absolutely perfect. Um, if you haven't been, I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, there's supposedly a really incredible sourdough bakery there that all of my friends recommend. So hopefully you can go check that out. Hello from Portland, Oregon. Oh, that's awesome. I um, kind of technically am from Portland. I'm not from Portland, but that's where my driver's license is that I'm currently from. So uh, very, very cool. We love Oregon. 
Have I camped at Canyons of the Ancient BLM near Cortez? I haven't, actually, and that's crazy. My brother lived in Durango for five years, and so I felt like I had explored that area quite a bit, but we'll have to head back. Um, maybe it's by Mesa Verde. I'm not sure if you want to leave a comment um, about that, but yeah, that'd be super cool to check out. Kathy Fultz. Hi, Kathy. What are what you thought of the roads in Baja? Honestly, not that bad. I will say the washboard and the potholes in certain off-roading areas, like dirt roads, were pretty rough, but that's because they're off-road. I wouldn't say, though, that the major highways were any worse than if anyone's ever driven a Flagstaff from California. I think it's Highway 10. Um, it was akin to that, I would say. So not terrible, definitely avoidable. And uh, a lot of people also are super worried about how narrow the highways are down there. That's a really common complaint that I hear. And it is true that most highways there are one lane each direction, no divider. And they can be narrow without much of a shoulder at times. But I would say as long as you're comfortable driving your vehicle, this isn't too big of an issue um, with the caveat that I'm in a truck camper. So being in something more oversized, like a really big school bus, a huge RV, like one of those class A bus styles, I could see how that could be a little bit harder or a little more nerve wracking. But I have a lot of friends who are down there in like 40 foot school buses and they're doing just fine. I don't know of anybody who's knock on wood gotten in like an accident or had any issues that weren't just like purely mechanical. High and dry is better. I agree. Honestly, I think that one of the hardest things to deal with on the road is the moisture. And so if you can find a dry climate, you're going to be so much better off. Portland, Oregon is okay. Oregon is my home state. Yeah, you know, I'm not really much for the cities. I will admit uh, Portland's great as a city, but I do tend to stay in more rural areas or more mountainous areas. So I haven't spent a ton of time there. Um, but I do know that the time that I have been there, the food is exceptional. Are you happy with your truck camper heater? Has it kept you plenty warm? Yes, I'm happy with my heater. It has kept us warm, but I would say more than anything, it's been a combination of the things that I do. As I was mentioning a few minutes ago, it's important to get ahead of the weather. So whether it's really hot, keeping things cool is easier than like cooling things down. If it's really cold, it's easier to keep things warm than it is to heat them up when it gets really cold. So with that said, I usually will turn on my heater before I need to if I think I'm going to need it that night. And that really helps just maintain a warm temperature. Um, but this is all to say, like, I'm only turning on my heater when it's below 20 degrees or so outside. Because before then, I really just put on like sweats and a jacket and between Tara and my body heat. And, you know, I use a down sleeping bag, as you guys can see here in the back, can't point, <laughs> um, which keeps me really warm. Tara, has a rumple down blanket that I've given to her <laughs> that was mine that keeps her really warm on cold nights and just generally it's not really that hard to keep it comfy in here. The one exception to that though has been being up here in Colorado specifically above nine or ten thousand feet which is very extreme for most people camping. Uh, I don't have the high altitude orifice on my heater. And for anybody who knows about propane, I know very little. So <laughs> give me grace here. Um, but essentially propane is less efficient at high elevations, elevations. And so there's a specific piece that you need to install on these marine sea level optimized heaters in order for them to work their best. Unfortunately, I knew this year I was going to be in Baja, I was going to be in the desert of Arizona, I was going to be in Joshua Tree. I did not necessarily plan to come up to Colorado where regularly we'd be above eight, nine, ten thousand 10,000 feet. So because of that, I didn't install that piece even though I do have it. It's the end of winter and I didn't want to pull my whole heater apart to install that piece when I wasn't sure where we'd be spending this summer. And so right now my heater is not as efficient as it could be. We're still staying warm, but I'm definitely using more propane than I would normally be. And at really extremes, like above 10-2, 10-3, when we were in Leadville, my heater actually didn't work. Uh, and so again, completely my fault, not the heater's fault. Otherwise, I've been extremely happy with it. And I know if I took the time to install that, we would have no issues. Cortez, Colorado. Yes, definitely Cortez, Colorado. Um, the one near, I think, Dolores and like Mancos and whatnot. I'm pretty sure. 
Will I ever travel to the East Coast? You know, I get this question a lot. And it's not that I'm opposed to the East Coast. I'm not an East Coast hater. I think there is so much to see out there. There's so much beauty from photos, from friends who have traveled there that I would love to experience. I just think full time on the road, it might be a little tricky. And this is just based on feedback that I've heard from folks who have a hard time finding camping or you're paying for camping every night, which is not usually how I travel for a few reasons. Um, I also think though... It's just really far. <laughs> and making a trip out to the East Coast, I'd probably want to go during like the fall season to make use of the colors and get out hiking and whatnot. And as we were discussing, moisture is not our friend. So I think in a smaller setup, in a more stealth setup, in a part-time setup, I would totally go out there. There are some hikes that I really want to complete out there, like the Long Trail, for example. And so I know I'll make my way there just probably not in the big foot and probably not soon. Oop. Do I ever worry? Oh gosh. <laughs> Sorry guys, learning how to use this chat. Do I ever worry about Tara running across a venomous snake? Definitely. Um, I think if you're not worried about things like that, or if it's not, at least on your mind, you're kind of fooling yourself out here, um, especially in desert climates, even being up here this high, there are rattlesnakes. And as things get warmer, it is certainly something that's on my mind, especially with a curious pup like Tara, who really loves, unfortunately, to find like gopher holes and other places where snakes would probably like to hide and stick her head straight in the hole. So a couple of things so far that I've been doing, one, if I'm concerned about it, or if we're in a high, you know, snake or predator territory, whether it's coyotes, wolves, bears, snakes, scorpions, she's on a leash. She is just on a leash attached right to me within a couple of feet and stuff could still happen, but I'm really not that concerned about it. We're also really, really working on her off-leash recall and skills, and she's gotten amazingly good at it, especially just in the couple of months that we've been able to really exercise uh, that strength and skill of hers. So that makes me feel a little bit better. And then also, like right now, she's outside lounging in the sun, but she's on that 30-foot tether that a lot of you have probably seen in my videos. And I know a lot of people think that that's like animal cruelty. How could I tether her up all day? Um, how could I just keep her on a leash and restrict her? But it's really for her own safety and for the safety of wildlife and other people and dogs. Tara is not a reactive or aggressive dog in 99% of situations, but all it takes is one kind of fluke thing, one new experience, one wildlife encounter that she's never had before, a dog coming up and feeling like they're, you know, threatening the camper for her to react. And so it's something that I do for safety, not only for wildlife, but for everybody else trying to enjoy public lands. Um, and one last thing I'll say about that as well for venomous snakes specifically this summer, actually, I'm trying to get her signed up for a couple of training courses with off-leash recall for things like hiking and big pack rafting trips and bike packing trips that I want to take her on. And in addition to that, a rattlesnake training, because I think if you're going to have your dog off-leash responsibly on public lands or in desert conditions where there's predators, where there's venomous snakes, etc., it's in their best interest to have them trained. Um, and I'm a little bit nervous to do it because I've heard some mixed reviews, but I think ultimately it will be worth saving her life in a situation like that. Did I hear Maddie Taylor quit Van Life and move to Europe? I did, and I'm really happy for her, you know? Lots of big life changes. <laughs> um, I don't know all of the details necessarily of it, but it seems like she is really happy and exploring a new part of the world with Eliza. So only words of support and love for her. And yeah, I hope this new adventure is everything that she wants it to be. What has been your favorite state to stay in? This is such a hard question to answer. <laughs> um, I feel like <sighs> there are so many answers to this. Colorado is one of my favorites uh, because of the recreation. Oregon is one of my favorites because of the ability to stay so close to town and have access to all the luxury things like going out with your friends, going down to the river, community events, music. Um, Stanley, Idaho is one of my favorites because of how isolated and beautiful it is. So yeah, I guess those are a couple of my favorite states. If I had to choose one, Oh, man. 
I guess I'd probably say Colorado. Like if I had to pick one state and not leave, it would probably be Colorado just because all the things that we love to do are here. It's also very dog friendly and BLM is everywhere. So it's really easy to camp almost regardless of season. But lots of states on my highlight reel as well. Claire on the road. Hi, Alex. I might have missed this, but do you recommend a music membership like Academic Epidemic Music Bed or something? Um, yes, I do. This is not sponsored whatsoever, but I in the past have used Epidemic and I think it is a really great way to start out if you're just like starting YouTube or starting creation and you need access to licensed music, not copyright music. I do think, though, that there are some limitations to that, and I have since, since switched to Musicbed, um, but that said, it took two years for me to use Epidemic to get, like, kind of tired of the music there and want more music and, in my opinion, slightly more elevated music. So I do use Musicbed now, um, but that was well after I started making money doing this, and I would say that unless you have a super high budget or you're able to fork over, I think, the $34 a month for it, Epidemic is perfectly fine. And I think YouTube even offers like free copyright free music. So if you're just starting out, maybe even start there with something free and then you can work your way up as you see fit. I love Musicbed. I love the variety that's there. I love the style of music that's there. And also just the licensing process has been super easy to make sure that I can stay monetized. Hello from Georgia. Oregon is great. Stay away from Portland. Yeah, I definitely tend to stay away from Portland, but I'm sure it's wonderful. As a YouTuber, are you aware of how much content you do has already been done over the past year for years by so many others? You know, good question. I, <laughs> you're going to maybe have a hard time believing this. I'm not a big consumer of YouTube. And I say that honestly, like I do watch some YouTube. I do have some favorite creators. But I don't watch a lot of people in my niche, and unless they're my friends, I really like forget to check up on them, unfortunately, which maybe sounds really bad. Uh, I probably should do more research on what's going on in my niche and what's working and what's not. So in terms of day-to-day -day trends, not necessarily. But what I will say is the research aspect of it, when I go on to like, the back end, and this is going to get a little technical really quickly here for creators... I can see what's working well for other people. And I think at the end of the day, there is always going to be this push and pull between wanting to be unique, wanting to be an individual and create from my heart, create things that I'm passionate about, create things purely based on what I would like to create. But on the flip side of that, this is also my job. This is how I make my money. And as just an example, because I don't think people really maybe understand fully how this works, when something goes really well, I might make a couple thousand dollars a month, which is awesome. I mean, it's not enough to be saving long term, but it's enough to live. It's enough to pay my bills. It's enough to pay for gas. Last month, for example, though, some of my videos didn't do as well as normal. Not sure why, um, but last month I only made $200. <laughs> so you can see how why that swing is and why some of us might be pulled to make videos that are performing well that other people maybe have already created because we know that people are interested in those topics. So I hope that answers your question. I try to make videos based on things I'm interested in, based on community feedback, but at the end of the day, it is also my career and this is, you know, many streams of income, but YouTube creating content online is my only income source right now or my only career path. And so I do have to also consider what works really well. And sometimes it does mean making a video that is similar to something other people have already done. Okay, I'm going to try to scroll without... There we go. Cool. Would I ever travel Europe? Um, I'm not sure that I would ever do it in a vehicle. Maybe I would change the answer to that if I could take Tara with me. But I have traveled Europe in the past. I think I saw maybe 14 or so countries, but that was over like a summer and a half. So definitely very quick. I would love to go back. Um, but having Tara, I knew that I was signing up for a more stationary life. And most of my travel would be based in the Americas, most likely, unless I was willing to ship a rig overseas. And at this point, not only financially, but just like where my life is headed, I don't think it makes sense for me to bring a rig over to Europe or to other continents, uh, unless it's like South America, and I can do a continuous path, not only because of Terra, but also, again, financially, it's really expensive to ship a rig. 
it's really risky or it can be really risky to purchase a rig overseas without seeing it before. And then also just the stress that that could put on Tara having her fly. I'm not sure how she would react to it. She can be sensitive. So I would just want to be really cautious before making a decision like that. Okay. Hi from Italy. What is the best state in the USA to travel with in a van? Ciao. Hi, Elena or Elena. Uh, lovely to see you. I love Italy and I'm actually Italian on both sides of my family. So people are asking about Europe. I'd love to go back to Italy. Uh, in terms of the best state to travel, I think really anywhere out West, you're going to be okay. And okay being just, it's easier. It's a little bit, uh, I don't know. You have better access to public lands. It's more friendly to rigs out here than it is perhaps in the Midwest or the East. And there's also just more to see. I say that hesitantly. No offense, anybody from the Midwest or the East. I'm sure. I'm sure that it is absolutely spectacular and beautiful. But as a foreigner, I think you're probably used to seeing more of like the mountains of the West. So if that is the experience you were looking for anywhere like Colorado, Montana, pretty much, yeah, Colorado or Montana, West is going to be the easiest. Uh, Utah is really friendly for parking on public lands and being in a van. Oregon is a really great place to be while still maintaining in that central area, that dry climate that we love. California is pretty tricky, and this is coming from a Californian. A lot of places have recently been shutting down their BLM, and so unless you're staying on that eastern portion, uh, kind of like the Sierra and east towards Nevada, it is a little tricky to get free camping, but it is a beautiful state. It's my home state, and so would recommend that. And then I'd say Colorado, too. So it depends on what you're looking for, but if you want big mountains, dry climate, those are my recommendations. Got any tattoos? I do have some tattoos. Um, I have long sleeves on right now, so you can't really see, but I do have a couple kind of on my arms. I have some on my hands. One on the back of my arm. I have one on my ankle and a small one that I just got with a friend actually on the inside of my other ankle. And yeah, a couple here that unfortunately you can't see right now, but I've just collected them over the years. It's been fun to get them from friends, places I travel, and uh, yeah, not really much to say about that, I guess. You live up on Mount Hood. That's awesome. Tara and I, I'm not sure if you saw, but we just last year did the Timberline Trail, and it was an absolutely spectacular, spectacular trip. Hi, Trey from Long Island. Relevant, relevant, relevant traveler. I like your name. Uh, what air compressor are you using for suspension? I can look this up. <laughs> I actually don't know off the top of my head, but I bought it in a package. So I don't have a separate compressor and then airbags that I have to manually fill, but it's actually one electronic box that I have a remote control for. And yeah, maybe I can leave that in the comments after the session. I'll find a link to what I use, but it's been really great so far and uh, no complaints. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I keep messing up uh, how I'm scrolling. Let's see. I love your videos from Victoria. Hi from Victoria, Australia. That is super cool. EcoFlow sponsorship. That could be cool in the future. Um, but I actually really love my Blue Eddy products. Sponsored, not sponsored. <laughs> I work with them definitely on a long-term basis. And they've been working really well for me so far. So I think I'll probably stick with Blue Eddy for now. Your camper turned out really nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. We really love it. And uh, after about a year now on the road, which is so crazy to say, it's been holding up really well. So I'm super happy with it. Hi from Puerto Rico. Hello. 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 The bread is fantastic. You have been to the sourdough place. That's awesome. What are my plans for summertime? Oh, this is a big question. So I'm not skipping your question. I will come back to it, but this is actually going to be a part of the update that I'm going to provide in a little bit when I can get caught up on these questions. Um, so thank you for the question. We will get there. 28 miles west of Mesa Verde. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So that is the um, spot that Laura was talking about uh, with cool BLM. For the mountains, love your vids. Hi, Olympia. St. Lucia, living in an island, the lifestyle doesn't make sense. Humidity, yeah. Humidity would be really hard on an island, and I really applaud anybody who can do long-term life on the road in places like I've seen Costa Rica, I've seen Hawaii, Florida. That seems so much more difficult than what we do, honestly. Hi from Oklahoma. 
yeah, fall out, out east would be beautiful. Sisters, have I seen the sun eclipse? Uh, I did not go to this most recent eclipse that everyone saw in like the Texas uh, strip that went across the states. I actually did see an eclipse though in Austin, Texas when I was there in October, which was super cool. I think we had maybe like 60 or 70 percent of the eclipse, which is nowhere near full, but it was enough to see all the shadows on the ground change and for the lighting to really like, like I went outside and didn't realize it was happening and my eyes just felt like everything was kind of 3D, like light was bouncing off of things very odd. So very cool experience. Um, I would love to do that again. All right. Recall training is so important. Yeah. Actually, just last week, we had an incident where Tara was on her leash in this area and um, the people were super kind, but they didn't realize, I don't think, that we were up here and their dogs ran into camp and everyone was fine. No one got hurt, but it definitely was a scary experience where I had to like pick Tara up um, because she reacted to them charging into camp. And I just... I'm reminded constantly of how important it is to have good recall if your dog is off leash and especially when they're around other people or wildlife. What is my zodiac sun sign? Ooh, I always love it when people guess this, but since we're in chat, um, I am a Leo sun. Deb, happy to have you here. No worries about being late. I like your braids. Thank you. Um, I actually did this this morning because I'm going on a run after this live. So I just figured I would get ready early. Oh, do I prefer listening to Billie Eilish or Adele? This is such a specific question. I don't listen to either. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but I did grow up in the time of Adele when she was really popular. So I guess I'll go with Adele. What do I do for work? So this is evolving, always evolving. Um, but right now what I do is YouTube, not necessarily lives like this, but um, I make videos every week. I post over on Instagram. I have a newsletter. I have a Patreon. And so I'm just pretty much in this constant cycle of creating videos about Tara and my travels on the road. And like I said, that is soon to evolve, which I'll get into in a little bit here. Uh, but for now, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, Claire, thanks for asking must go to Germany. You know, honestly, I really did enjoy Germany. I wish that I got to see more of the country. And this was back when I went to Europe, I guess. I was like 19 years old. It was my first time out of the US, which was super fun uh, to go all over Europe. Berlin was super fun, though. I loved the culture there. The food was fun. The people were fun. The music was great. And then all the architecture around the city was also incredible. I would love to make you jewelry. That is so kind. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, I recently got these fun little finger emblems, whatever you want to call them. And I keep looking down thinking I should get some rings or something cool to, I don't know, accentuate it. Nope. The crowd West. No offense. That's okay. It's not for everybody. Um, I'm from the West. So I guess I'm just biased in that way. Some of my favorite YouTubers. So as I mentioned, I don't watch it ton of YouTube, but there are people that I do watch every single week. Um, the Van Wives, definitely up there, which I'm sure a lot of you also watch. I, gosh, <laughs> are they the only people that I watch every week? I feel like when I use YouTube, I'm more searching topically, like things that I want to learn about. Recently, I've gotten into uh, watching furniture making channels, which is completely irrelevant to being on the road, obviously, but I guess I'll just kind of find an interest and go down that path. Um, oh, another one. Isabel Page is one of my favorites. I just really love her cinematography. I think it's really beautiful, and I think she is awesome for building her own house. Everyone to Bozeman. You know, honestly, I, <laughs> excuse me. I did go to Bozeman right when I bought the truck camper. I was trying to race through Montana to beat a snowstorm to get back to Oregon. And I got stuck in the snow in Bozeman. So I would love to go back in a better time and with now a built camper, not a moldy, broken down camper without Tara. How did I come to a truck with a camper as opposed to a high top van? And have I tried other options? Oh, you have so much to watch if you want. Um, I have. I actually was in a high top van first, then I was in a school bus, and now I'm in a truck camper. And the way that I got to the truck camper was based on my experience in the other two. So high top van was great. It was a brand new Ford Transit. You know, I did the whole like white sprinter van type thing. Um, I was also though at the time working 
a full-time nine-to-five job remotely for the government. I had a very consistent, much higher income than I do now. And so I could easily pay for a loan that I took out on it and all of the lovely things that I put inside of it. Um, But when it came time to it, I decided I did not want to go back to the office. I had a puppy. I had Tara. She was only, gosh, like not even a year old at the time. And they wanted me to come back to work in San Francisco. And I knew I for sure was not about to go pay San Francisco rent. I also really did not want to have her in a van all day while I was at work in an office and then sleeping in a city. It just would have been really stressful. But I knew that I was not done exploring and experiencing this lifestyle. So I sold that van so that way I could pay off that loan and any of the debt that I had and then also buy a bus in cash. Bus broke down on me all the time. No surprise if any of you are here for that. It was really stressful. Um, So when I sold the bus, I wanted something that was more capable, hence truck with 4x4. And I also wanted something more reliable. So I went with an older Toyota. Um, And in terms of the camper, the Tundra is limited on the capacity that it can carry. It's usually much lower than things like a Ford or a Ram. And so knowing the payload capacity or the amount that the camper or the amount of camper that could fit in the bed and that the truck could hold, I knew I had to go with either a pop-up model, which does not have a lot of storage and is just a little bit more to set up and tear down when you're leaving camp. And I also wanted something that was more four season capable, which is how I got here. Okay. That is super cool. An E350 cutaway seems honestly like the way to go in terms of having something maybe a little more reliable. Those Econa lines will run forever, I've heard, and also so customizable. You could put a box on the back, you could put, or you could just have like a regular van. Super, super cool. Do I always plug the camper into the Blue Buddy? You know, I actually never plug my camper into the Blue Buddy, and that's because when I installed the electrical system in here, I didn't install shore power, didn't feel necessary because I am never (laughs) in an area that I can actually utilize that. Um, I also have 450 watts of solar on the roof, and so as long as it's sunny outside, which is how I charge the Blue Buddy and the camper... Um, I really don't have to worry about my power. It's only when it gets super, super cold and snowy out that then I have to conserve power. Um, So right now my Blue Eddy is outside charging both solar panels and Starlink, which is how I'm talking to you all. And the camper is actually already at 100%, even charging all of my electronics, running my fridge, et cetera, here. So hasn't been a need, but obviously if I wanted to do that in the future, it would just be a matter of installing shore power in the camper and then plugging it directly in. The Blue Eddy would have no problem running it. Hi from Thailand. That is so, oh, I'm just so blown away by how many people are here from around the world. And you're the first one that said you're from Thailand. So hi. Hi, West Virginia. I've heard it is beautiful out there. I have a friend who moved out to West Virginia a while ago. Okay. Apple Music or Spotify Queen? You know, I know there's a lot of controversy around Spotify because of artists not being paid very well. And so I don't want to say that I support that, but I will admit I was on a student plan when I was in college. I think it was like $4.99 a month to get Spotify and Hulu, which is the only streaming service that I pay for. And I am not on $5 a month anymore, but I got grandfathered in. So for $9 a month, I get Hulu and Spotify, which is really hard to beat. Um, But maybe I'll switch to Apple Music in the future. Let me know if you guys like Apple Music better. How do I deal with bugs? Okay, bugs aren't really that big of an issue right now, this time of year. But come summer, mosquitoes, bees, big issue. Um, I don't know if I can show you guys or if you'll be able to see. But one of my favorite features about these windows, oh, what an angle, is when they open up, they actually have built in bug screens. And so you can see there's a bug screen now, uh, which really prevents any bugs from getting in from outside, which has been really lovely. And especially in places like Baja, when I wanted to have my windows open all night, but I didn't want to have like a bird or bugs flying in, um, that was what I would do is just open up my windows, pop down the screens. Uh, The same goes for all of the windows in here, as well as this little divider and then my fan up top. Grab some water. I've been talking a lot. (laughs) 
Yeah, just back from Florida. I would love to cruise the coast, but not much free camping. I really heard that too about the Keys being especially difficult now because I think during the pandemic or like the height of that time, a lot of people tried to go to the Keys and it really shut down a lot of the camping, unfortunately. So I think now more than ever, it's become really difficult. Back when you did the van build, how long did it take you? It took about, it's hard to say exactly, because um, I was working a full-time nine-to-five and I had a puppy. So uh, it would have gone a lot faster if I didn't have those things and also if I wasn't filming it. But the whole build, start to finish, took about seven months. Love the van wives. Hope she heal. Oh my gosh. I hope they're okay. I have not seen, I guess, that video. I'm not sure who got injured, but that is so scary. It's Monday at 2.15 a.m. Natalie, you are awesome for being here. I'm so sorry that the timing did not work out well. Uh, truthfully, a lot of my audience is in the U.S., so I tried to pick a time that would work here. What is one long or short-term goal? Okay, you guys are getting me to hint closer and closer as to what is coming up in the near future. So, um one, I guess I'll hint at it, one long-term goal is to go to graduate school. I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy doing YouTube. I think that I always want to document my life, whether I'm traveling or not, um, whether I'm on the road or not. It's just a really fun, creative outlet. And the community that I have found and built here has been one of the best parts. So I definitely want to continue to do this. Um, but that said, I went to school for environmental science and management. And I think that ultimately, I would really like to work in that space still, um, go back to that space. Not exactly sure what that looks like yet. If that is creating something like my own business, if that's joining an initiative, working for a nonprofit, etc. cetera. Um, but I think that ultimately, I do want to trend back towards that. Leo. Oh, thank you, Maxwell. That's really, really sweet. And good luck with your big foot. That is so exciting. Oh, Lorraine has been here since the bus. I appreciate that. <laughs> How else can we support your channel than Patreon? Honestly, Patreon is the best way. I think it's just the easiest um, for you all. And then also you get benefits from it, which have recently been more just like ad-free videos. But that will be increasing as time goes on. I have some really exciting plans for summer and fall with more guides, if you will, like putting together some of my favorite places to travel um, and also extras like podcasts. So I would say that that's probably the best way right now. I don't have any other like donation channel or page set up. Can I turn on the super thanks button? You know, honestly, I'm not sure what that is. I will look into it though. Thank you. And thanks for being here, Jeff. Any issues with Starlink? None whatsoever. I would say the hardest thing with Starlink is keeping it powered. The Blue Betty is great at that, but I know a lot of people with Starlink will have to turn it off overnight or they have to like really limit when they can use it because of power availability. And I would say, especially in like cloudier winter conditions, that would be the case if I did not have Blue Betty. So as long as you have a way to run it, it's been incredible so far and definitely worth the money. Um, something too to note is if you're gonna use Starlink around the clock, I've been able to drop my previously, I think it was like $130 for my phone, my hotspot and the extra hotspot that I needed through a different carrier to run my business on the road. And so that bill is now $20 a month because I just basically need the ability to call and use a little bit of data. So the price of Starlink and that $20 plan is pretty much the same that I was paying when I had like a crazy big plan with another carrier. So definitely worth it. Okay. Any more backpacking plans? So I actually had had a trip planned this weekend, which I'm super bummed about. Tara and I were going to go to Pariah Canyon, which is in the Grand Staircase Escalante Grand Canyon kind of uh, Venn diagram, if you will, right between Arizona and Utah. But unfortunately, with her recent health stuff, she hasn't been eating as well. She's lost some weight. And I was just really concerned about bringing her into a canyon for five days without feeling confident about her health. So we did have to cancel that plan, but I am really hoping that over the next couple of weeks and months, she can get back on track and we can do some backpacking probably out here in Colorado. No seums in Maine. I have heard of no seums and I am not excited to have to deal with those one day. <laughs> 
why is Joshua Tree such a favorite? Honestly, it's not really my favorite. I have been out there now once, one time in three years, and I did like it, but the things that I liked about it were the friends that I had out there and that I met, um, not really the place itself. I'm not really like a flat lake bed desert gal, personally. Impressed by long-term goal. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. I really, really love school, actually. I know a lot of people think that people who do YouTube are here because we don't want to work or, like, go to school. And that's cool. But I actually really enjoy school, and I'm really excited to further my education. How many weeks behind you are we to catch up in real time? I'm usually about a week to a week and a half in advance. Um, that varies depending on the platform. But on YouTube, usually it's anywhere from like seven to ten days. Hi from Vancouver Island. I have some friends out in Van Island. That's awesome. I'm doing well. Thank you. I'm out of breath. <laughs> my dog is more traveled. That's really funny. Yeah, honestly, she she has traveled quite a lot. She's been to two countries now, hopefully three. Maybe we'll do Canada next year. But um, yeah, she's been to, I think, 13 or 14 states now. Lots and lots of travel. Okay. I think I'm caught up. We are also at 49 minutes, and I'm going to try to keep this around the hour mark. So if you guys have made it this far, <laughs> I'm sure you're waiting for the update. If you have more questions, you can drop them. And if I have some time at the end or afterwards, I'll go ahead and answer them as I can. But some of the updates that I've been hinting to, I'm going to keep it vague and brief for reasons that will make sense later, but mainly just because I don't want to speak too far in advance and some things not happen. But Tara and I, I, on behalf of Tara and I, have decided to stay in Colorado pretty much this entire year and possibly even for the foreseeable future. The reason for that is because I recently ap applied to grad school. I'm so nervous. <laughs> and I'm in the process of waiting to hear back. I should know more this week. And I'm very excited to be potentially starting this program, to be going back to school and to be furthering my education and knowledge in an industry that I'm really passionate about. Um, it is environmental science broadly, but very specifically in the outdoor recreation economy sector. And so think working with like policies and stakeholders and companies to be more sustainable, protecting public lands, protecting natural resources, which are all things that I'm very passionate about. And over the past couple of years on the road has only been more ingrained into my psyche and into my passions and lifestyle. And with that, there might be some changes to how we live. Going to grad school on top of working <laughs> is going to be a whole new ball game. I'm going to have a lot to figure out. I'm going to have a lot to schedule. Obviously, I still need to have an income and make money. And I do plan on continuing to be here in this space with this community that is not changing. I just don't know exactly what living is going to look like, whether we might try to pick a home base for a little bit so that way I can be successful in school and work, whether I'm going to be able to still be in the camper and park out on BLM. I'm not entirely sure. So that's kind of the portion that I don't want to get too far ahead of myself in because I, yeah, I just don't want to misspeak because I don't exactly know what it looks like. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to be going back to school. I'm very excited to be furthering my career. I'm really excited to meet more people in my community, which is something that I've talked about a lot in the past. I'm sure that that community exists out here, but a lot of the people that I have come into contact with just have different visions for the future, have different passions, have different hobbies. And so being someplace like Colorado already in the past three weeks, I've gone skiing, I've gone hiking, I've gone fishing, and just have done so many of the things that I've been wanting to do while on the road but haven't found the community to enjoy them with. So I'm feeling like Colorado has been the right decision so far. I hope that it still feels that way in the next couple of months, um, but that's the big, big update. And as soon as I know more, I'll of course keep everybody updated, let you know what that looks like in terms of travel in the big foot. Maybe we're gonna become weekenders for a little bit, um, but regardless, rest assured that there still will be camping videos. There are still gonna be life videos, updates, um, hopefully more lives if you guys enjoyed this and maybe a little bit more of my life sprinkled in like going back to school. Oh, you guys are so sweet in the comments. Thank you. I've honestly been really nervous because 
I know a lot of people when van lifers, people on the road kind of change their lifestyle, whether it's getting off the road, going to school, getting a new job, whatever. Um, you can kind of experience some pushback on that because people don't love it when you change your niche. But at the end of the day, I'm a real human. I am 27. My life is still growing and evolving. And I think it would be really unfortunate if I just stayed the exact same as I was when I was 24 and originally hit the road and didn't grow and evolve. So yeah, thank you guys for your support and for being here through it all. It's been really cool to share my journey and I hope to continue to do it with you guys. Where in Colorado? Um, so again, don't want to share super, super specifics, but it is a CU or a Colorado University. And so think kind of mid, mid north <laughs> in Colorado, greater Denver area maybe is the program, um, but it is hybrid. So it means that I will still have flexibility to be traveling, camping, doing the things that I love, which is one of the things that really appealed to me when I applied. Yeah, I mean, if folks are interested in school, I, again, want to make sure that folks are actually interested in what I'm doing uh, before I start just making a bunch of videos on it. But I'd be more than happy to share that as I learn. And yeah, I don't know. Keep growing. <laughs> Hi from Tyler, Texas. We're new to living on the road. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. No, honestly, this area, Colorado generally, is a great place to be someone who's a weekend warrior, someone who is traveling and camping, and also having life balance, whether that's work or school. So it's part of the reason why I really chose it, in addition to, of course, the program. Yes, after exams, take a long trip. I know getting this new balance is going to be interesting, trying to figure out how to manage work, school, and play, but I'm determined to do it. And also, again, Tara is always my priority, so to make sure that she is a good life balance while we're at it. Looking to relocate to Golden. That is so cool. Golden, I've heard amazing things about. And in fact, next year, hopefully in February, we'll be attending their Golden Retriever Day in Golden, Colorado. So maybe we'll see you there. In the long run, buy a piece of land. You know, that would be cool. If I could find land that you would be legally allowed to reside on without building a home or septic or water, that was actually my plan originally was to buy land. But I think because of the goals that I have for myself, both short and long term, wanting community, wanting to go to school, needing to have an income, and just wanting to be a little bit more involved in my 20s, a lot of the places that you're allowed to buy land and build on slowly while living in a rig are very isolated. And so I hope that that is a part of my future still. I would love to build my own home. I would love to have a partner and a family one day and to have that be a part of my story, but I just don't think that it's where I'm at right now, and grad school also costs money, so the money that I do have and that I'm making on work or from work is also going to be probably going to my degree right now. <laughs> Ah, Dan and Marlene, Molly Mish fam, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is definitely a new development since we last spoke. I was, if you guys missed it, on their podcast. I guess it was probably like a week and a half ago. And I had a great time discussing all things travel and our paths. So yeah, really appreciate your support. And if you guys want a cool family to follow, my goodness, they were in Costa Rica last I saw, but I know you guys have moved on since then. Go check out their channel and listen to their podcast. It is it's incredible. Keep it real. Get my icon pass now. Honestly, I already put myself in the camp of not getting a pass for next year because you guys can't see it, but up in my bed, I just recently got a really great end of season deal on a split board, which for people who don't know, it's a snowboard that breaks into two skis essentially. So you can ski uphill and hopefully go with friends so you're safe in the backcountry, and then snowboard down. Um, and the cost of that setup was a little bit less than a pass, which is partially why I decided to do that. So now I just need to find community to go do it with and get my Avalanche certification, which hopefully being in Colorado will be no problem next year. Awesome. Golden is amazing. Small town vibe. Yeah. Really love the satellite towns around Denver because like I mentioned earlier, I'm not a big city person. So I don't think that I would do very well living like in Denver proper, but around closer to the mountains in the mountains, Golden, 
places like that would be amazing. Considering basing out of Leadville, you know, I have friends who just moved there who I got to visit a couple of weeks ago, and it is absolutely spectacular, especially if you're into the outdoors. Summer is definitely better in a lot of ways, I think, than winter, just because they are at like 10 to 10 3, and it can get really cold and really snowy. I was just there last week and it dumped on us. We got like six inches of snow overnight, and a lot of the banks were still over my head. So, unless you're a big, like, I don't know, snowshoer, big skier, that's a great place for you to be. Otherwise, winter can be tough, but the area is beautiful and the community seems really great. Niagara and Canada. You know what's funny is actually Niagara Falls, if I'm not mistaken, was the first place that I ever went internationally. I know it's on the border of New York and Canada, um, but one of my uh, family members got married when I was like, three or four years old. So I was very small, but I did go to Niagara a while ago and it'd be cool to go back. The falls are spectacular. Happy birthday, Sean. That's awesome. And okay, the update from the Molly Mish fam. They are getting ready to ship their van from Panama to Colombia. So I, I believe they're still on the Pan Am. Uh, we had discussed how they've been kind of bopping around, but they've done so much international travel with their three kids. I hope I'm not mistaken. You have three children, um, but they all seem like spectacular humans. And yeah, I just, I love following their adventures. It really gives good perspective to what you could do if you have a family. Instead of trying to stop travel, you could still continue to do it like they are. The live has been awesome. Oh, I'm so glad. And we just hit an hour too. So we are going to start wrapping it up here, but I really appreciate everybody who's been here and joined and asked questions and participated. It's been so fun. Um, so maybe I'll give like one more minute to wrap it up. If you guys have any last minute questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments now. And otherwise we'll go ahead and wrap it up. And I'm going to drop some water because it's been a lot of talking. <laughs> Get my ETF set up. You know, I'm actually not sure what an ETF is, but let me know. I am not in Mexico. Uh, I actually left March 1st. I think I got back to the States. So I've been back here for about a month and a half, and right now I'm in Colorado. Ah, uh, Vanguard funds. I actually do have investments, thankfully. I got that done um, because my grandpa encouraged me to, as well as my parents, when I did have a job that had like a 401k and, you know, all of those investments. So thankfully I got into that kind of early on in life. Okay. Well, it seems like everyone is having a lovely rest of their Sunday. Thank you all so much for being here. I know normally I only take 15 to 20 minutes of your time and today was a full hour. So if you've been here even for a few minutes of it, I just really appreciate you guys showing up. If you enjoyed this live, uh, let me know in the comments. I have a question here. When is the next live? It's really just based on how much people enjoyed this. I definitely won't be doing it every week or so, but maybe it can be something that we do like once a quarter, a Q&A and a live update session uh, if you guys really enjoyed it. Once every three months. Yeah, I think that would be good. Once a quarter. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone so much for being here. If you want to see more behind the scenes, like I said, podcast episodes, ad-free videos, hopefully some guides, especially as I kind of settle into one region this year and get to know places better, you're welcome to join over on Patreon as well, where I do host a in-person, so you'll be able to actually speak to me on Zoom live chat as well. Uh, and otherwise, I will see you all here this coming Thursday. I should have a video coming out. I hate when I say that and it doesn't happen, but sometimes it is just based on approval for videos. So either Thursday or Sunday, but I'll see you guys this coming week. In the meantime, I hope that you've all had a wonderful time. Someone said that they loved it when I say bye. So thank you for being here. I'll see you next week. Bye.